Welcome back guys. Today's video I'm going to walk you through the removal and repair of a seal head assembly on a K-series pump. One of the first things that I like to do is get all my tools and stuff laid out or close to me. It makes the repair process go a lot quicker and easier if, uh, if everything's right next to you when you're doing the repair. And we're going to start down there on the end and zoom in down there and we'll start the repair process. Just a few items to note before we get into it. Um, you're going to remove your high pressure tubing and gland nuts and move those back out of the way. Um, your inlet water and then we'll start into this section. Keep in mind that for video purposes a lot of these gland nuts I've already got loose so that you guys aren't sitting here watching me loose my fittings. <clears throat> a little side note on removing gland nuts by hand. If you'll take and move that with your left hand and kind of get it centered and get the pressure off of it, these things will back out with just your fingers even after they've been in the pump for a while. Once you back it out, move it to the back out of the way. Uh, go ahead and unclip your quick connect on your inlet hose. Um, <coughs> Second thing we're going to do is loosen this seal head gland nut from your seal head body. Now if you're just going to do a repair on the outlet check valve, that's great. You're going to go ahead and loosen it now and you're going to pull this all the way out and repair your parts. Today we're actually taking this off as an assembly then we're going to go to the bench and do a complete repair on a seal head assembly. So when you see that in a minute in the video, <clears throat> if you're just going to do the outlet parts, You'll do the exact same thing we do on the bench in a minute, only you're just going to do it on the machine. So that's fine. But I would suggest that regardless whether you're going to go to a bench or do it here, make sure you loosen those. If you try to loosen those two when you've just got laying on a bench, it can be extremely hard to hold this and, and use those wrenches to loosen it. Like I said today, we've already got them a little loose for video purposes. Just back it out a quarter or half a turn and then you're going to loosen your jack bolts. When you loosen your jack bolts you can just go around it counterclockwise or clockwise. I just go around it and back them all off a quarter or half a turn. As long as they're loose that's fine. Once you get them loose you can either turn this thing by hand and take it off by hand. If you have one of these cylinder wrenches it makes it pretty easy. So you can just go around in circles. Now keep an eye on these these parts are fairly heavy, so kind of keep an eye on your thread engagement. When you get close to being to the end of your threads. Uh, you'll notice that it gets a lot easier to turn. At that point, you want to use finish it up with your hands, supporting it from the underneath side. Take your time, go a little slower so that we don't drop it. Keeping one hand underneath of it to support it. Get it off, set it directly down. Now we're getting ready to go to the bench and I'll show you the rest of the repair process and then when we come back I'll show you how to prep the cylinder and clean it before we reassemble. Okay we're back at the bench. You've noticed I've already taken my seal head assembly out of my seal head nut <clears throat> and I've taken it apart and laid all the pieces out. Um, your pieces of course for today's video and stuff our pieces are all new so there's no really refinishing or finding defects or anything because granted um, all the parts are new. At this point once you take yours apart you would clean and inspect anything for any type of damage on any type of threads, sealing surfaces or the top of the seal head assembly itself. Um, of course we've already cleaned our female threads out and got everything ready for reassembly. Um, so we're going to start with the top of the check valve or top of the seal head assembly with the inlet check valve. The first thing you'll want to put on is the inlet poppet it itself. It's flat on one side. It has a 
uh, counter groove cut in to the top that will go up and you put it on the inlet hole. The next is your <clears throat> inlet poppet guide. It's got a locating pin here, a center hole where your bolt will go through, and of course a counterbore cut to accept the inlet poppet. You basically just line everything up. When you get ready to put the uh, the socket head cap screw on the top, you're going to put just a little bit of goop on those threads. It doesn't take much, just a small amount to make sure that you don't have any galling on stainless to stainless threads. Right now we're just going to finger tighten the top of it. We'll put the outlet pieces on to the seal head assembly and then we'll go to the vise here in just a moment. You can tell I've already cleaned the female pocket out and cleaned all the old goop and stuff out of these threads. So we'll start with putting the outlet seat in. It's flat on both sides. It's the same on both sides so therefore it doesn't really matter which direction you put it in. I like to take a small amount of goop just a little bit and I'll touch one side of it so that you have a small film of goop on one side and we're going to put that side up into the assembly. You can push on it and with that small film of goop on there it'll hold that in there without falling out. Now we'll put all the components into the seal head gland nut. The first thing we're going to put inside the assembly would be the spring guide. You're going to put the dovetail, the big end of it, down. The spring itself has a larger OD on one side and a small on the other. You're going to put the small end down. The flat outlet poppet has a hole on one side to accept the spring guide and it's flat on the other that's going to go towards the outlet seat itself. Drop it in there. You don't put any kind of lubrication or goop on any of the parts you put inside. You need those dry and free where they move really easy. At this point we'll put a little goop on the threads. I like to take my finger and wipe that goop into the threads as you work your way around it so that the first few threads are coated all the way around. Remember the outlet seat was held in there with a small amount of goop. You can hold it up. Once you start, you can go all the way to the bottom and hand tighten. Now we'll take the assembly to the vise and we'll torque these, the inlet retaining screw as well as the gland nut into the seal head body. The top retaining bolt tightens at 30 inch pounds. You'll tighten it until you hear the snap. If you don't have this type of uh, torque wrench, you can use a regular tor torque wrench, but know that this is in 30 inch pounds, not foot pounds. Now we're going to tighten this, the gland nut into the body. This torques at 130 foot pounds, so it's pretty tight. I usually put my hand on the top of the body to hold it secure and my foot against the bottom of the vise until I hear the snap. Now we'll go back to the bench. Now at this point we're ready to put our seal head assembly into our seal head nut. Um, I was going to go ahead and show you the way that I goop these female threads. I put this goop on my index finger and I start wiping the goop in a circular motion all the way around rolling the unit towards me. And you do this all the way around the part until you get all the, 
all the threads coated all the way around. Once you get the threads coated all the way around, you'll turn around, you put just a little dab of white FML grease on the O rings. At that point, you'll slide the assembly into the gland nut and you'll push it back into place all the way down. At that point, we're ready to go back to the machine. We're going to prep the cylinder or show you how to do that. Um, first thing you're going to do is pull your cylinder spacer out and you're going to set it to the side. Um, now, for today, the video purposes and stuff, of course, um, cleaning of the threads and stuff. When you do that, what works really good is a toothbrush. I use uh, I use a lacquer thinner, acetone, anything like that, WD-40, uh, brake cleaners, things like that to remove the old goop. Um, I usually either try to put some kind of tray or I put enough rags underneath of it that I don't have these cleaning chemicals and stuff down on the paint. It kind of makes for a cleaner process. I use a start and I squirt the top of it using a toothbrush to get everything out of the threads. Then once you get that broke down, of course, um, you can go ahead and use a rag and wipe the rest of the way off, removing all um, old goop or contaminants in those threads. And once you do that, um, then you're ready to apply new goop. When you're applying new goop, make sure you do the same thing as you do on your female threads. Um, I put a small amount on my index finger pulling out and around in a circular mat fashion and filling those threads to the top all the way around it. Once you have those threads clean, make sure your cylinder bore is nice and clean. You can use the same lacquer thinner, acetone, things of that nature on a clean rag. Make sure you get it in there and twist it. Clean that cylinder bore and this angled surface really well. At this point we're going to inspect our cylinder spacer. Make sure you don't have any dents, dings, cracks, uh, flakes where it's maybe coming apart or anything. Make sure it's, it's in really good shape. If it is, you can slide it back in at this point, all the way in. Um, I usually take my finger and wipe just a small amount of goop and put it on this sealing surface to help keep that seal head assembly from galling when you put the when you put it back and it comes in contact with the cylinder. Now, when you stick this assembly up there, it's heavy. Make sure you support it under the bottom. Um, align your threads and, and keep support underneath the bottom as you go around and you'll feel it kind of snap into place. Continue to support until you get a few threads of engagement on there. Once you get a few threads in, then you can kind of it'll hold itself. You can then take your wrench and continue to tighten. When you get close to the bottom of the threads, I always slow down so I don't slap those threads together at the very bottom. When you come in contact with the bottom, I leave it just barely tight. At that point, I'll, t I'll just hand tighten these jam nuts against the face of that seal head body. What that does is it helps align the seal head assembly to the end of the cylinder and making sure that it is square. Once I've got them hand tight, I will align my inlet water. I back it off until just where it aligns where you can hook that up. And then again, I turn them all the same amount. Go around the whole thing so that everything stays square. And now you're ready to tighten these or torque these down in sequence. 
one of your first settings. Um, your first sequence is going to be hand tight all the way around. The second one is to set your cylinder or your torque wrench on about 20 foot pounds. Is going to be your next stage. You're going to do them in a cross pattern. Start the top, work your way across, then back to the top, across, back to the top, and across. You'll work your way in a cross pattern all the way around the part. This first stage, you're going to tighten it till you hear the click. Work your way around. Then you'll take your torque wrench to your final torque setting. Your final torque setting will be in your manual and to your specs and stuff, or it uh, will be laser marked in the face. Um, you'll have to check that. Different units torque at different amounts, so check your manual for the specific torque ratings. When you get your torque wrench set, you're going to go around it again in cross pattern until you hear it snap. Once you get it all the way, the third series done, you're going to go in a clockwise fashion all the way around. Once you finalize this, remember in this procedure we went to the bench with this, we torque this gland nut into the seal head assembly um, in the vise. If you did your repair here, you're going to want to torque this now. Um, if you've got to torque it when it's on here, make sure that you hold the seal head body really good with a wrench when you're tightening this with your torque wrench. Um, if you let this seal head body rotate inside here after it's been, after the jack bolt's been torqued down, you can gall that surface between the seal head assembly and the cylinder. If you gall that surface, then you're going to get a water leak right off the bat. So if you torque this down out here, hold it with a wrench here, torque wrench, but don't let, don't let the seal head assembly move. You're ready to uh, go ahead and hook your high pressure lines back up. Again, centering the high pressure tubing so that there's no side load on it. It makes it go a lot easier. Hold the tubing where it goes and give everything a gentle snug. Once you have it snug where it holds itself, you can grab your inch wrench and then start around tightening your high pressure fittings and you'll want to continue to tighten those throughout the rest of the gland nuts. That, can, that concludes the assembly of the seal head gland nut. Once you do that and you get your high pressure tubing there, you can quick connect your water line. Once you have your water line assembled, you're ready to start the unit. I would suggest starting your unit on a low pressure setting um, and check for any leaks at your weep holes, high pressure fittings, seal head body, cylinder nut. And if you don't have any leaks at that stage, then you can go ahead and go to your high pressure setting, recheck for leaks and stuff. If you don't have any leaks at that point, you're ready to get going, guys. Thanks for watching.